by popular demand. Today I'm going to be doing my 2015 makeup favorites. I've never done a video like this. I didn't do one last year. I didn't do one the year before. But so many people asked me to do it and I have to shout some people out because if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be doing this video. So starting off with Maria Rodriguez, do you think you can do a best in beauty 2015 video? Would love to know which products you thought were the best this year. I really value your opinion. So thank you, Maria. And then um, I have Cindy Johnson. I love watching your videos. Looking forward to your 2015 favorites. And lastly, I have Karen Garcia saying, by the way, have you thought about making a video with your favorite items of the year, including your favorite brushes for eyes and face? That would be awesome. So today, like I said, it's just going to be makeup, but I am going to be doing a brushes video. I have several like makeup brushes videos out already, but they're kind of old to be honest. And also, to be honest, I use a lot of the same brushes. I've gotten a new set that I've been like loving, but I'm going to do a video. I'll probably film it tomorrow all about brushes. So let's just get into the video. So I want you guys to know I looked back on most of my videos this past year, and it was pretty easy to pick out these products because I would like nonstop talk about them. So it was pretty easy to pick them out. And if you watched me this past year, then you're going to know all of these products. But um, yeah, it was pretty easy. And I'm just going to start off with foundation. I have two of them, and they're both from the drugstore. And I do want to mention a lot of the products it's a good mix of drugstore and high-end which I think is pretty good so the two foundations I have are the covergirl ready set gorgeous foundation in 110 and then the L'Oreal infallible pro matte foundation in 102 shell beige this is actually a little bit too dark for me so I have to go up a shade because I'm super pale um, but starting off this I use towards the beginning of the year and I really like it it gives a nice satin finish it doesn't last as long as the L'Oreal one but it's still really pretty it doesn't cling on to my dry patches this is what I use when my face is like super dry um, because it just still looks nice and it doesn't look like gross when my face is super dry I can't really use this one because it clings on to my dry patches but the L'Oreal one is more matte it lasts longer and it just looks a little bit more flawless so uh, it kind of depends on what you want if you like really really matte looks go with this one if you like more of a satin look then go with the covergirl one it doesn't give as full coverage as the L'Oreal one but it's still really really nice I use it every Every day pretty much for work right now this is my go-to foundation um, just like two months ago this was my go-to so I've been like switching off with these and they're both awesome foundations check them out so I'm just gonna go in the order of how I apply my makeup so next is eye primer and this primer I've been using for like three to four years I haven't switched it up it's like my favorite eye primer ever it's the uh, Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion in Eden I do like the original one but I like the Eden one better because it um, mattifies my lids and then it also covers any discoloration that I have on it so I start off with a clean base um, my eyeshadows last all day they look flawless like I get home from like a 12 hour day and my eyeshadow still looks just the way it did in the morning when I first applied it so that's why I love this uh, primer I won't ever switch it up like it's very hard for me to try new primers because I love this one just so much it is pricey but it's a good investment and it's just awesome it makes your eyeshadow look perfect on point now, the reason why I really like that eyeshadow primer is because it primes my eyebrows um, so that they stay on all day because the last thing I want is for like my eyebrows to fade and then I have no eyebrows so as an eyebrow pencil I use the Anastasia Brow Wiz in dark brown it used to be called brunette but this is literally the best eyebrow product ever I've tried other ones and this like nothing tops this and a lot of people talk about it on YouTube but it's for a good reason like it's not one of those products where like the hype is totally not true or anything like that, but it has a very thin like pencil side. It's retractable so you don't have to sharpen it. It keeps everything very natural. I mean, you can go super dramatic with this, but for me, like I just lightly fill in my brows and it kind of mimics hair. It blends out really well. It's not too creamy where it slips and slides. It has like a dry texture too so that they stay on all day and it just looks really nice, guys. I can't I don't know what I would do if Anastasia like discontinued this. I would seriously die. Once I'm done filling my eyebrows in, it's on to eyeshadow. And looking through all my old videos, these three palettes are like the ones I could not stop talking about. So the first one is the Urban Decay Naked 3 palette, which coincidentally I do have on my eyes today. I filmed a tutorial just in case you guys want to see it, but I love rosy tones. If you guys don't like that, then you're not going to really like this palette or want to buy it, but I love it so much. I feel like it makes my eyes really pop, and with this palette, you can do very dramatic looks, which I have on today, and then I also have like 
two to three, maybe even four tutorials on YouTube where I do a very simple and easy Naked 3 eyeshadow tutorial. So I'll list all my Naked palette tutorials down below, even one and two. Um, but I love this palette so much I can't get enough of it. I've used it since the day I got it. Like I have never given this guy a break. So my favorite. And I haven't hit pan on any of the shades. Like you'll have this palette for a very, very long time. And then the other one that I didn't realize how many tutorials I have using this palette and how much I talked about it, I have no idea. It's the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Semi-Sweet. And this is a beautiful palette. I think it's a total must-have for your collection. It has neutral colors. It has this weird but fun blueberry swirl color, and I have a tutorial using it. And it's gorgeous. I think, I think you have to have it because it has beautiful cool tone shades, warm tone shades. You can't go wrong with it. And the quality is amazing. And then one that kind of snuck up towards the end of the year is the Lorac Unzipped palette, which is also very rosy. It has like bronzy rosy tones, which, which I love. I can't deny it. It's a gorgeous palette and I'm so glad my sister got it for me because I probably, I don't think I would have picked this up just on my own. Um, so I'm happy she got it because I love it. It's one of my favorite, favorite palettes and I'll also link tutorials on this one as well. One drugstore eyeshadow that I noticed in a lot of my videos I used, and I actually haven't used it in a while, but I had to mention it because I did use it a lot at the beginning of the year. This is the Milani um, Bella Cappuccino eyeshadow. This is like a perfect transition color, and that's what I used it for a lot in my videos. I love several of these Bella eyeshadows, um, but this one is by far my favorite. Bella Bronze is really, really pretty, and also Bella Emerald. I have tutorials using all of those, but this one by far is a good staple to have. That's it for eyeshadow. I probably could have picked like five other products, but to be honest, these were like my favorite, favorite ones of the year. After my eyeshadow, well, during my eyeshadow process, I do my eyeliner and also my concealer. So I'll do eyeliner really quickly because you guys already know what I'm gonna say. So say it with me, the Physicians Formula Eyeliner in brown and black. Before, I would only use brown and then I stepped my game up a little bit and started using the black, but I don't use any other eyeliner on my upper lash line. Like, no, no, no. And I say this in almost every single tutorial. I love this so much because I am not an eyeliner expert whatsoever, but this makes eyeliner so easy and so just easy to use, easy to, easy. Easy to make that flick, um, super easy to just clean up if you mess up for some reason. It's the perfect eyeliner for beginners and for people that just can't do eyeliner. This is where it's at guys, I promise you if you have issues with eyeliner, try these and you will be like an eyeliner boss. You guys know when I do my eyeshadow, I like to clean up my eyeshadow edges with concealer and the one, I just put like a black dot on my face, and the one concealer that just beat every other concealer known to man is the Rimmel Match Perfection, um, what is this called exactly? Rimmel Match Perfection 2-in-1 Concealer and Highlighter. I'm so glad that I found this concealer. I think I was like shopping in Walgreens one day and this just, I don't know, it looked like it could be a great concealer. I tried it out and it's literally a great concealer. It's my, by far, like by far, my favorite all-time concealer ever. I've gone through three tubes and it's just, it doesn't cake up your under eyes, it doesn't dry them out, it doesn't crease. Well, if you use too much, it's going to crease, but you have to set your eyes, okay? If you're going to use concealer under your eyes, set them and you'll be good to go. Once you set this with a powder, it's totally fine. It gives great coverage. It is the perfect concealer. Like, I have so many high-end concealers and nothing compares to this. Like, I don't know what's in it or why it's so good, but it is so good. Okay, so on to mascara. There were two that definitely stood out. The first one is the L'Oreal Telescopic Carbon Black. It's my all-time favorite mascara. It's very, very lengthening and very good at separating every single lash. Uh, the wand is so thin. It's literally a straight line, so it's easy to get through every lash. And it also, I tend to get mascara everywhere. Like, I'll get it all over my lids, all over my face, all in my hair, which I just did. Now it's gonna get all over my face. Um, but this really, really helps prevent getting mascara everywhere, so it's it's an awesome mascara. If you do like a lot of volume, that's not gonna be the mascara for you. 
For volume, I have the Voluminous Miss Manga Rock. I do like the regular Miss Manga, but this one for sure just, um, I like better to be honest. It's a very thick and clumpy formula, which gives a ton of volume. It doesn't give a, give a ton of length, but if you mix the two, they're just like, it's the best thing ever. Um, it has a really fat wand and has rubber, rubber, has rubber bristles, um, but it's still really good at giving that volume and giving some clumpage. I don't know if that's a real word, but if you don't like clumpy lashes, then you're not gonna like that. Um, but I, I don't know. I like both of these. I think they're great mascaras. You guys should try them out. Okay, so I think that covered all of the eye area. Now let's move on to the face. We're starting off with powder because once I put all my foundation on and then my eyes, I move on to powder, setting this bad boy. So remember when I mentioned earlier that I set my primer with a powder, I used the Dream Wonder Powder by Maybelline. It's a really good consistency. It's a little bit too dark for all over my face, so I do want to get a lighter one so I can put it all over my face. But this is great to set my primer because it's a like a creamier powder. Like It's not as like powdery and dry like other powders. It's a good one to set your eyes, so I use this to do that. And then for my whole face, this one is awesome. It's the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Powder in na, 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 na. I don't know what color this is because it doesn't say but it's probably one of the lightest ones um, it keeps my face really matte and when I don't use this sometimes I'll forget I can tell that my contour isn't going on as smoothly and my blush and all of that and it doesn't last as long so I definitely set it with this and it just looks really nice it doesn't look powdery it doesn't look cakey it just makes everything even there are other powders that I'm gonna mention right now but it's more like part of contouring and highlighting so after I'm done setting my my face I move on to contouring so so the first part of the year I use the Anastasia contour kit like crazy and I was in love with it I thought it was the best contour kit ever and then the Kat Von D shade and light palette came along and it stole my heart and I rarely use the Anastasia contour kit anymore but both of them are, are definitely worth mentioning obviously the Anastasia contour kit is worth mentioning Anastasia contour kit Fawn is one of my favorites. It's a great contour powder for fair skin. If you're a couple shades darker than me, I think you can still get away with using it, but it's a great, great contour powder, and I still love it to this day. Um, I also really like this shade right here, which is a highlighting shade, and also just a setting, like setting your under eyes. You can use this. It's vanilla. I love that shade. I know a lot of people just kind of forget about it since this yellow shade is like all the craze. This is banana, which is really, really good too. So those two those two colors I love and fawn I actually also love the shimmery highlight shade a lot of people don't like it but I think it's really really pretty and if you have fair skin it's great because it actually shows up on your skin a lot of highlights at the beginning of the year I wasn't into highlighting because nothing would show up on my skin but this guy right here is gorgeous so fair skin girls try this out it is beautiful okay so this little baby right here I, I hate this shade and I hate that shade that was just a bad joke, but this is Subconscious. It's a great contour shade for all skin tones. Just be careful because these shades are so pigmented, it can look muddy. When I first got this palette, I think I've mentioned this before, I did not like it because it was so pigmented and it looked muddy and I was just like, oh, I hate it. But then I started to lighten up a little bit and now I love it. It's my little baby. So this is my favorite shade. This guy right here in the middle is Shadow Play. I used to bronze up. It's very pretty. It's just more on the warm side, so I wouldn't contour with it. But to bronze up your face and to add some color, this is a good one. I love this yellow guy right here. I like it more than the banana from Anastasia. It is Lyric. Very pretty, very brightening, and then this one I love too, which is Levitation. This is great uh, for fair skin. It brightens up really, really well, and mix them together, and it's like the best powder of life. And the last bronzer I want to mention, I just got this like two, maybe three months ago. It's uh, the Hourglass Luminous Bronze Light, which is right here. You can buy this individually, but I uh, decided to get this whole palette because I wanted to try out Hourglass products. Um, but this is so pretty. It's a beautiful, just bronzy, glowy bronzer. I don't, I wouldn't use this to contour, but it's very pretty. It's not a super matte and flat bronzer. So I like to contour with matte products, and then I like to put like a kind of satinier, glowier bronzer on top, and it just looks so pretty. It looks like skin. I... I hope you guys try it out because it is a gorgeous bronzer. It's expensive, but it's totally worth it. 
looks beautiful, doesn't look muddy, doesn't look cakey, looks like skin. Okay, so after I bronze up and everything, it's time for blush, and that's one of my favorite parts of makeup. So one that I used a lot um, as a blush, this is actually a Shimmering Skin Perfector by Becca, but this is in rose gold, and I used it as a blush. It's beautiful, it's bronzy, it's coppery, it looks great on fair skin, it looks good on darker skin. It's a great blush. It's obviously not a matte blush. It does have, I wouldn't say shimmer, but it does have a glow. So if you don't like glowy skin, wouldn't use this, but it's really pretty. It looks great on the skin, so it's one of my favorites. And then also by Becca, this is Becca's Flower Child. Oh my god. It's one of my favorite blushes ever. It's a beautiful, like, peachy pink. It looks great. There is a dupe for it, um, Wet n Wild's Pearlescent Pink. They're identical, but I love the formula of this. I love the consistency. It's very pretty. It doesn't look powdery. It doesn't look like you just put powder on top of your face. It's gorgeous. So I love that one. And then when I want to do my like cooler tone looks, I love the Jordana uh, Blush in Rose Silk. One of my lovely subscribers told me to buy this, and I've like fallen in love with it ever since. Last blush item I have here, or items, I have the um, MAC little blush palette that I created. Well Dressed is oh, one of my favorite 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 I mentioned mocha a lot which is like a mauvey kind of pinky warmer tone blush also immortal flower which is discontinued but it's beautiful melba which is great on all skin tones so these blushes I've used a lot in my videos I've talked about it a lot so I'm not gonna get too far into it okay lip products I have a lot here but after I mention all of them you guys are gonna say yes that's totally accurate so starting off Maybelline's touch of spice matte lipstick like was I not obsessed with this for like months and months and months I love this formula they're very pigmented they're easy to work with they don't feather you do have to use a lip liner I do at least but they're just really really great lipsticks and it's great to see like a drugstore bleh, drugstore brand have a, such a good quality lipsticks so moving on to Sephora's marvelous mauve ever since I saw Marlena from makeup geek wear this in one of her videos I was like I have to have it and then I wore it for like months straight so if I wasn't wearing the touch of spice I was wearing this one this is a, li a liquid lipstick and I feel like Sephora's liquid lipsticks don't get enough hype here on YouTube but they are awesome they are one of my favorite favorite like formulas as far as liquid lipsticks go so this is marvelous mauve it's really really pretty and it looks great next up I have NARS Anna which I haven't used in such a long time and then I used it the other day and I was just like why haven't I used you why because you are gorgeous but this is NARS Anna look how pretty it is it's more of like a cooler tone pink and it's just pretty. I think everybody's got to have it. And this is a really, really good formula too. Like they stay on for a really long time. And I don't think NARS claim that these are like long wearing. So I'm not complaining because it's awesome. And then, oh my baby, this is this is by far my favorite, favorite one. It's Lolita by Kat Von D. It's gorgeous, darling. Let's just, oh, it's my favorite, guys. Kat, Kat Von D. Cap on D Lolita. It's like a dark mauvey brown, and I love the formula for these liquid lipsticks as well. The Sephora ones are good, these are good, and ColourPop. Those are like my three favorites. Moving quite along to MAC. Oh, it's a combo. It's a combo. We have, this was towards like the middle of the year when Kylie Jenner lip craze just like went to the next level. This is MAC's lip liner in Soar. And you guys are probably like, oh, I'm tired of hearing about Soar, but it is a really, really pretty lip liner. It's that mauve kind of shade. And then on top, you have Honey Love. I'm not going to put it on top of Soar. I'm just going to put it next to it. But these two mixed together gave that like brownie mauve lip that Kyler, Kyler, Kylie Jenner was rocking. So I used this combo, oh my god, a ton. I tried to mix them over here. You can kind of see it. I'll link tons of tutorials where I use this. Oh my god, it was like non-stop. I was like kind of driving myself crazy. Okay, so that was it for my favorite makeup products of 2015. I want to know what you guys loved, and I want to know if you guys agreed with everything that I mentioned. Like, if you watch my tutorials, was I pretty accurate or what? <laughs> so, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, where I post every single day a ton of different type of pictures. Follow me on Snapchat, where I snapchat you guys all the time and i look at everybody's story it's super duper fun and i think that's pretty much it thank you guys so much for watching happy new year and i'll see you in my next video bye